Houston, it would appear that Eagle has landed. Hi everyone and welcome to Saluso and yes today we're talking about the brand new Omega Speedmaster. On the very first Speedy Tuesday of the year Omega released the often rumored and possibly leaked new Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch and it's in my view a great great triumph. Now I had seen some of the leaks of this before if you follow watch forums and are in a few watch groups you probably saw them as well. But Omega quickly pulled those, but now they've come out, it's the official release, there's no more conjecture, this is the new Moonwatch. And honestly, I think it's a great triumph. Obviously, they used the Rolex school of design when it came to making this very much a very subtle evolution, but that's kind of the point of the Speedmaster. It's the watch within Omega's collection that stays roughly the same as the original that was used in 1969 to go to the moon, obviously with a few changes, primarily being the movement. The actual watch that went to the moon had the caliber 321 that's now doing duty in the Ed White as well as in the Platinum 321 edition. And for several years, it's been a variant of the Lemania 1873, most recently the caliber 1861. But that all changed this year because now we have the caliber 3861 on the inside and that is by far the biggest change with this watch make no mistake while it does still look very similar to its predecessor when you turn it around there are a few very key differences with this movement first off it has the coaxial escapement secondly it has the meta certification it has a silicon balance spring it's 15,000 gauss anti-magnetic and from all of that it even has an extended power reserve but it is still also the manual wind lateral clutch cam operated chronograph that we've grown to know and love from the speedy so in that sense, it's not really a revolution at all, but it has brought out a very 21st century Omega approach to this old school movement. And I think that's a great way to preserve the line. This watch could have only gotten so far using the exact same movement that it always has because the original wasn't meant to be technically advanced. It was meant to be just robust. Now it's a little bit of both using technologies that Omega has proven in other movements but still staying true to the NASA spec caliber that's been in service for so many years. And then bringing it onto the outside, yes, there are a few changes here and there, but this is all about the details. The first thing that you'll notice that everyone talks about is the dot over 90. Now, if I'm honest, as much as I love Omega, I'm not as much of a speedy fanatic to really put much stock in that, but I know that that is something very important within the Speedmaster community. It's something that people have wanted for a long time. And you've seen Omega do it in some of their special editions most recently, but now it's in the series production, it's back. And it's definitely an indication that Omega does care about its community. They care about the purists. They care about what the speedy enthusiasts like, and that's what they put in it. And I think that's really important and says a lot about the company. You have other details like the step dial, which again is a throwback to a previous dial style. And I think this adds another little element of depth to the dial, which makes it that a little bit more interesting. I mean, it is still extremely legible, extremely functional, but little things like that make it that little bit more special when you look at it. Also, they've added an applied logo for the Sapphire Sandwich variant. And yes, there is still a Sapphire Sandwich and Hesalite version available of this new generation of Moonwatch. So you can still pick on if you want something that's a little bit closer to the original, or if you want something that's marginally more modern for today's standards. They didn't, however, replace the insert. I thought they were gonna maybe do a ceramic version, but no, it's still the same anodized aluminum that we had in the old one. And I'm perfectly fine with that as well, because again, this is a watch that's supposed to take you as close as possible to what went to the moon and what's been going to space for the last 50 years. And then the last major aesthetic change they made was the bracelet. And I think this is actually something quite interesting because this is now a 3861 movement equipped watch and it's using the bracelet that was released in 2019 with the 50th year anniversary in Moonshine Gold Edition. So it's a similar style in the sense that it's got the alternating satin and polish, but it's much thinner in terms of the center links. The center links aren't as wide as on the previous generation Speedy's bracelet. So it gives it a slightly more vintage look. 
I personally prefer the links on the old bracelet and my favorite will always be the flat bracelet like what we've seen on the Ed White or on the 2019 50th year anniversary edition in steel but I'll happily take this as well because it's a really good looking bracelet that still complements the design of the watch and it has that same historical significance that all these other details have. One thing you'll notice there is technically nothing new on this watch instead it's all harking back to historical nuances and really just showing that Omega cares about the details and it's had this watch for 50 years. It's done so many special editions, so many variants, so many mission editions. They have plenty to cherry pick so they can make what for them and for what their community is the perfect Speedmaster. So in that sense, I think it's a great execution. Now in terms of price, they have of course increased the price and I think understandably given the new movement and how much forward this brings that original Lemania based caliber. So they've increased the price on the Sapphire Sandwich from 6,300 US dollars to about 7,100. But it's by no means inaccessible and I don't believe this is going to be a watch that's going to be weight listed or held back. Obviously we don't know until it starts hitting shelves. But I think this will be a largely available watch and that's a big advantage for it. And even then at $7,000, what are you going to find under $10,000 that's a hand wound chronograph? that has the sort of history that this does, that has the level of finishing, that comes in a great big presentation box as well. At the end of the day, while some people may complain it's become a little bit less accessible, the value proposition is still there and for that I think it's a great great achievement and I think Omega deserves to charge a little bit more for it. The Speedy is often regarded as one of the best value watches on the market so Omega has probably been selling itself short for quite some time as well. So for those who have a Moonwatch already though the question is do you sell your existing one and get this? Or for those who were thinking of buying one, do you get a pre-owned previous gen moon watch or do you get the new one? For those that already own it, I see no point in selling your existing one to get this new one unless there's anything specific about it that you really really like because this is still the DNA of the moon watch. In concept and execution, this is still very much the same watch you have. For those who are contemplating between the two, it comes down to preference and budget. Right now, pre-owned prices for the previous gen moon watch are still very accessible. You can still get one for around the $5,000 range, which is where they've sat for most of the last few years, even when they were still in production. They never really dipped below the $5,000 range too much. They may rise a little bit with the discontinuation, but I think that'll subside a little bit purely because there's been so many in circulation. When I looked on Chrono24 today, I saw some for sale for $8,000. I personally don't think that's going to last. I think that both of these will sell pretty competitively against each other and more importantly they will be accessible. They won't be out of reach for the majority of collectors that are interested in one to begin with. So if your budget allows I would say go for the new one. If you want to get one that's already on the pre-owned market you can save yourself the money and you'll still be getting an amazing watch and I don't think anyone will ever feel inadequate or will feel sort of undersold if they have the previous gen versus the current one because they're so similar. And one can always argue that the previous gen one is that little bit closer to the original. Whereas those who have this new one will be happy knowing that they have a five year warranty if they bought it new. They're going to have all of the latest technology that's pushing Omega forward. They know that they'll have something that will be around for the next 10, 15, 20 years again until they do another big update like this. So either way it's a win win and that's always been the case with the Speedmaster. It's very much a no compromise watch that anyone can enjoy. So those are my thoughts on the new Speedmaster. Obviously I'd like to get my hands on one in the metal so I can do a bit of a closer judgment and hopefully do a full review. But initial impressions are good and I think this is a great addition and a great start to 2021 as well. But I'd love to know in the comments below what do you think of the new Speedmaster? What do you think of these new details? Do they hold value for you or are they just little nuances that just make it that little bit more special or do you not really care? And what do you think of the use of the new movement? Have they moved a little bit further away from the original or have they simply preserved the original and just given it a little bit of an extra kick to keep it relevant for the next few decades? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. And of course if you like this video make sure you like it and share it. If you want to see more pictures and the infographics that I use throughout this and all my other videos make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to keep seeing more watch videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so that you know when the next video comes out. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.